Well, there you go. Two of the great Easter hymns there. We might as well all go home right now, basically. But why would we do that? Because we've got lots more Easter hymns to get through. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to an Easter virtual church. A very happy and a glorious Easter to all of you around the world. Welcome to virtual church once again. It's very good to be back using the camera here rather than over there. It felt weird last week having it over there. If I'm honest, I don't like change. So we started there with um, the day of resurrection to the tune Ella Come, of course. One of the great um, hymns for Easter and a wonderful tune. And then we went into um, a, an arrangement of the second hymn uh, by Healy Willen. And the hymn was um, Good Christian men rejoice and sing Now is the triumph of our King To all the world glad news we bring Alleluia Great tune it is How on earth are you? Can't believe it's Easter But so But so I'm Not sure what that means it means, next sentence. Nothing is p programmed tonight. The only program, pro -man, pro -man, programming that I've done is I'm going to play your live requests. So I haven't pre-prepared anything because it's been rather busy. And planning takes time. <laughs> it does. Planning takes time. You know that. They can come and get up with a plan. Come and get up with an itinerary takes time. So I apologise. It's been Easter, you may, you may have noticed. It's been Holy Week, it's been busy. So I'm just gonna roll with it and see what you guys come up with. So let's get straight into our first request. Where shall we go? Let's go. So I've got James Palmer who's producing tonight. So if you have any questions, tag James Palmer and he will sort me out. Please just request really good Easter hymns. I'm going to just not go on forever tonight. I'm gonna to play good Easter hymns. Hymns. That's what I want to see. Okay, cool. So, uh, Thomas Moronta has requested um, Sing with all the saints in glory. Let's have a look at that one. It's been sent to my email by my um, producer-in-chief tonight, James Palmer. Let me open it up in the four score so I don't need to keep scrolling. Um, there it is. So, Sing all, sing with all the saints in glory. Sing the resurrection song, death and sorrow, earth's dark story. Clouds are breaking. Soon the storms of time shall cease. In God's likeness, we awakening know the everlasting peace. Don't think I know this one, so I'm going to solo out the tune for the first few verses so we can get used to the tune and then we can go off on one after that. Let's have a go at this one. I do know it, and now I've looked at the tune. I do know the tune, and you will all know it as well. I'll, I'll bet you, I'll bet you something. You all know the tune. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you know the tune. Okay, here we go.
course, we all knew that, didn't we? Good grief. Yes, sing with all the saints in glory. I mean, there's lots of different words that are sung to this. As Lord Byron has just said, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Yes, that tends to be, I think, what um, is known uh, to these, to the tune. Uh, and of course, it comes from his ninth symphony. You all know that, don't you? Of course, Ode to Joy, it's become known as. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you very much for your $10 as well. That's very generous of you. Happy Easter to you. What's all this um, green things going on on the screen? All these Nala's falling into the into the tip jar. I think, Donald, have you been very generous? Let me have a look on this side of the screen. Donald Dodson has donated 20 gifts. Good grief, Donald. That's very generous. Thank you very much. That's very, very kind. Thank you all um, so much to everybody who's uh, been donating tonight. I really, really appreciate every one of you. Let's go in now to um, Bill Ratey. I'm going to have to save that for a minute because I haven't had time to prepare it. So Bill Ratey has got something, a mashup coming up later. Not, not mashed potato, a mashup of music. Um, and we'll get to that in a bit. However, um, I think somebody called Maria New... Is that your surname, Maria, or is this, this, this is your new account? Um, has, has requested, when in our music, God is glorified. Oh, yes, this is the wonderful tune by uh, Stanford, isn't it? Um, uh, what's the tune called? I know what it's called. Engelberg. When in our music, God is glorified. Let me see if it's on the iPad before I have to delve in to... It is on here. That's great news. Um... Da, da, da. What on earth is that on that side of the screen? I don't know what that is. Oh, I see. It's a different harmonization. Words by um, F. Pratt Green. Music is by Charles Villiers Stanford, who, by the way, died 200 years ago. Jerry Martin, two things. Thank you very much for your generosity. I'm going to be in touch with you very soon because we haven't had a catch up for a long time. Second thing about Jerry is he's playing. The complete organ works of Stanford. Look, um, bra very, very brave man doing that, if I'm honest. But good work. Um, Jerry is um, uh, just the master at finding obscure music and playing it. So, it, I, I, that's great. <laughs> music here is by Stanford, which is why I, I mentioned that. As I said, it's called Engelberg, and I'm, in, I'm just um, withdrawing, drawing, should I say, the tuba. Let's have a go.
wonderfully uplifting tune there. That's Engelberg, um, composed there by Charles Villiers Stanford, who's celebrating, commiserating his 200th year of dying. Celebration, because he was a, he let he left a legacy. He left. Interestingly, actually, let me draw your attention to a documentary that Trinity College Cambridge have put out just over the past few days, 20 minutes, on their YouTube channel of Stanford. It's worth checking that out, actually. Just I learned some things about him and his time at Trinity Cambridge, um, which I didn't know before. So that's well worth checking out if you have uh, 20 minutes to spare. OK, so next request, which has come in uh, from Benjamin Yao, is let me just get up my email. Let me get up my email. Um, it's coming, I think, from somebody. I think is it this one? Let me just make sure. Yes, it is. Here it is. It is. As I have loved you, love one another. This new commandment, love one another. By this shall men know you are my disciples. If you love one another, actually. It's very short, so we'll have it twice. It's just, that's all it is. We'll have it uh, twice. I'll, I'm gonna use some of the quieter stops for this one, so you can turn up your speakers if you want. So I'm gonna use a, a mutation style on the choir. Um, so you, don't be afraid, I'm not going to suddenly engage tuba to give you all a heart attack on Easter day. I wouldn't want to be responsible for that. That might make me feel a bit guilty. So I'm going to play quietly and just a bit more serenely. Let's just take a, a breath. Take a break from all these uplifting hymns. Okay, here we go. Beautiful tune there, isn't it? It's just very short, very sweet. More like a, how would you sing that liturgically? You could probably sing that, um, you could probably sing that uh, during the piece, uh, perhaps um, just before the offertory hymn. You know, peace be with you and also with you. As I have loved you, love one another. Sort of relevant. In, with, with regards to the text, I think the choir could sing that maybe three, two or three times. Um, you know, trebles, sopranos, adults, full, before then going into the offertory hymn. That would work well like that, I think. There we go, Benjamin Yao, thank you very much. And thank you to Bill for sponsoring that on Benjamin's behalf. That's very good of you, Bill. Christ lay in death's strong bands. ELW 370. I'm not convinced that's on the iPad. It might be, but I'm not going to waste time trying to find it when it's inevitably not going to be there. So it's in the ELW. This one has been sponsored by Kathleen Lewis 
for ten dollars, thank you, and Scott Flanagan for nine ninety nine. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, I'm seeing familiar faces and familiar names here. Um, can you see behind me? I've got a big pile of books. They're in here because a lot of you know I was spent quite a bit of time signing them. So there's a, there's a hundred copies there, a hundred copies. And do you know, I can give you a bit of gossip here, a bit of inside news. I have sold, I have sold 82 copies of that book in about five days. I think that's, I'm really happy with that. I'm over the moon with that. That's very uh, uh, supportive of you. And... Scott, uh, Sean, sorry, yes, you have ordered one. And the reason I'm mentioning it now is because I know Scott has also ordered one. And I think Scott uh, wants me to give, me, give him a personalised message. So if you've ordered one of those, or if you want to order one of those, some of you might not even know what on earth I'm, I'm pointing at. In fact, no, I'll get, I'll get, that's my copy, I'll get this one. That's my copy because I, I, mess, I messed up the signature, so I thought I'll have that one. So this is what I'm pointing at. Um, the 82 copies of these have been sold. I wonder whether we can get to um, 85 copies sold tonight during the VC. And so the first 100 have all got a personalised message in there, which I've, which I've written. So that's, that, that's just, just uh, sorry, that's not personalised. That's best wishes, me. Um, but if you want a personalised message, I will then write something of your choosing, or not, just say give me a personalised message and I'll do, I'll do it. Um, and they'll be sent out from Tuesday, so you can expect to receive them this coming week. Oh, I'm so proud of this. This is my proudest achievement. I love the way it looks. I can't stop looking at it. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Anyway, let's not get too distracted. I'll put it on top of smelly wellies. No, it won't. It'll fall off. I'll put it... There you go. That one's going to get walked on by a cat. So that one's double value. <laughs> anyway, let's get to see... Let's see if we can get to 85 copies sold. Um, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to turn my phone off silent. And when, it, when I make a sale, it makes a really cool... You know those old-fashioned um, tills that open? And they go... Ching! Well, no, they don't do that, but you know the sound they make. The app um, makes that sound um, when someone buys, buys um, a copy. So if someone wants to buy a copy whilst I'm talking, you'll actually hear it um, going through the shop. <laughs> you'll hear the, the notification. So if you're so inclined to hear that, then please buy a copy. Okay, so here we go. Christ Jesus lay in death's strong bands for our offences given. Uh -huh. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Ah. So many things on the organ bench. Mm. Oh. Isn't there like a corral on this? Christ lag. Where is it? Where is it? Isn't it Easter? Christ lag in Tons Bond on 46. Which one is it? Oh, God, I don't know whether I'm going to play that one, actually. I thought there was another one. No. I won't play that, because I haven't practiced it. Here we go. I'm waffling. I'm too excited. It's Easter, and I've had two Easter eggs already today. Someone's just ordered a copy. Who was it? I want to tell you who it was. In fact, no, I'll, I'll wait. I'll tell you who it was in a minute.
great tune. I love these old. Um, um, uh, is, is that a Lutheran tune? You know what I mean. There's old, there's old German Lutheran strong, dignified hymns. I really love those. Just can you bear with me a second? I just need to go onto this this top camera. I've just realised I've not disabled the on-screen information on the GoPro. You'll see me fiddling. Things like that really annoy me. Uh, so I've just had a couple of orders whilst I was playing. So thank you very much to, these are familiar names, we've had a couple of orders from just now. James Mossop, thank you very much. And to Donald Dodson, thank you very much indeed for your order of, I assume they were both for, yes they were, for, for the new BIS organ book. Okay, so I'll get those sent out this week. And if you want a personalised message in them, just fire me an email to... Uh, Richard at Beauty and Sound or Hello at Beauty and Sound. One of those will get through to me and I'll be signing like a demon this week. And if I come to a virtual church next week with biceps out here, you'll know it's because I've been signing like an absolute maniac. I'd love to get to 100 sales by the end of the week. That would be astonishing. And I would have never have thought that we would have done that, but I think we're pretty close. Okay, so the bad news is for me uh, is if we sell out, I'll have to buy another batch. <laughs> and it's quite hilarious, actually, because when they arrive, they don't take up much space when they're like that, but they come in boxes of 20. Um, so all of that, all that pile there, came in five boxes. And the boxes are quite big. And <laughs> we haven't got a huge house, if I'm honest. But the um, all all box or how many boxes would there have been? Um, what's what's two hundred divided by uh, twenty? Oh my goodness, ten. Um, there were ten boxes. Yeah, ten. Obviously, ten uh, in the hallway, and it's like a big. You can build a castle out of them, you know. So we need to get rid of them actually. Um, anyway, let's go on. Let's go on to the, um, a wonderful hymn that I put online actually just the other day, yesterday I think. The strife is o'er, <laughs> the strife is over, the battle won. Now is the victors. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? It didn't ping because my iPad's on silent. Damn. But I got a new order and it's from Cheryl Hart. Yay, how, how are you doing? Happy, happy Easter. I nearly said happy birthday. <laughs> it might be happy Easter to you. <laughs> Thank you very much for ordering. Uh, how Yeah, ah, I'm just so excited. Uh, we are sold 85 copies now. Thank you very much. Yay. <laughs> this means more work to post them out. Our postman's going to hate us because we have a, um, we have a home delivery, uh, a home collection service and <laughs> Our postman, he's going to come to the house with, we just imagine giving him 85 books. Here you go. <laughs> Take these with you in your, in your post, in your sack. What? Uh, I don't think, we're, I think we're going to stagger it because <laughs> it was quite a lot. The strife is over. I don't, did, you, did you hear it? You heard it? Oh, good. It would be louder if my iPad wasn't on silent. Um, where is it? Oh, this is a great, great tune. Um, it's called Victory, but here in England, we simply don't sing the refrain. I don't know why, because it just is, it adds to the chaos and the drama. I love it. I played it in Lincoln, and it's, I put it online as a separate upload, because it was just really cool. And it's really rousing and uplifting. Um, and I wish we sang the, the, uh, the refrain here in this country, but we don't. But our loss, I suppose. Uh, the tune is... Um, this is by Palestrina. I can't imagine Palestrina wrote. It's been adapted by William Monk, who actually is an English composer. So why don't we in England sing the refrain? Has it been Americanized? Does someone in America think we should do the refrain? Or have we foolish Brits taken off the refrain? I don't know, somebody will know. Why don't we sing the refrain? 
this is how we this is how um we, I think we should sing it. Here we go. This is um this is chaos this. go the strife is over indeed the battle is done now is the victor's triumph won now be the song of praise begun hallelujah i like doug's idea actually he says in the elw the refrain is before the first and last verse not before every verse that might work actually i might suggest it one day in our english churches that we um do that I think that would work quite nicely. It's sort of really rousing, isn't it? It's loud. I think it would work as a good processional hymn like that. Anyway, let's go on. Thank you very much to Thomas for sponsoring that one for $10. That's very kind. Oh, James. Not only has James Mosser ordered a 2023 BIS organ book, it's also sponsored a banger. It's sponsored it's for £20. So I think £20 is worthy of a key change, James, don't you? All right, let's have a go then. One of the, 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 surely the great Easter hymn. Thine be the glory. We should have a vote actually at some point when, we, when we've had a 
Tell you what, Mr. Palmer, I'm going to put my producer in charge for a second. Chat, are you? Could you, could you, could you, could you um, nominate your favourite Easter hymn, please? Just one, just one Easter hymn. And I like James Palmer, maybe you could help him. Josh, I don't know, are you in tonight, Josh? I'd like James to present me with the top five nominated Easter hymns. If you can do that, it doesn't need to be deadly accurate. And then once we've got the top five, I'll put them into a um, into a poll. Can I do five? Is it four? I can do. Maybe is it four? Let me just have a quick look. One, two. Uh -huh. I'm just quickly. Oh, four. It says top four, James. Sorry, they need four. And then we'll do it like a vote. And then we'll, we'll play the winner. A little, a little vote for the best Easter hymn voted by BIS chat, the BIS community. So I think this has got to be in there. This is Thine be the glory, risen, conquering sun. Endless is the victory thou over death hast won. Sponsored by James Mossop. Come on, who else did a key change this morning? I put up a, um, a, a YouTube video on yesterday, just a very short one, saying, um, come on, why, why, why wouldn't you do this, basically? Come on, who did it? Who did it? Peter Sharp did a key change! 
good lad, man after my own heart. Anyone else to do a key change? D to E flat, yeah, well, that's, well that was E flat to E. You could do on each verse, I suppose. You could go up more than a, you could go up more than a, a semitone. You could go up a tone. You could go, go up a, you could whatever you want. You get, get them really singing. Because it's normally, it's normally the final verse, so even if they go home with no voice left, so what? All they're going to do is eat lamb and Easter eggs all afternoon, like me. If you're like me, you've, you've already had two Easter eggs. <laughs> uh, I don't regret it at all. Well, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Okay, thank you very much, James, for um, suggesting that one, sponsoring it as well. Uh, so, shall we now go into... Are you, James Palmer, are you uh, able to keep up with all of these um, nominations for our vote in a minute? Okay, right, let's have a go with our next request, which is coming from, I think, uh, Daniel, who has sponsored It's for $2. I think it's on my email, apparently. I like this system. We have a good system, actually, the producers and me. It works really well. Um, I, what is it called? I serve, I serve a risen saviour. Why has it been sent to two, two files? That's not helpful, is it? Two separate emails, page one. Oh, it's a proper scan, though. It's, to be fair, it is a proper scan. So how on earth... Am I going to have to open up two devices? Because I can't have two emails open on the same screen, can I? Obviously. So if I open up page two on the iPhone... Oh, it's only one line on the iPhone. So what I, what I could do is zoom in and then put the iPad on top of the iPhone and it's all gone wrong. That's probably a sign. I, I shouldn't, yeah, I'm not going to do that because now it's turned off. <laughs> I've been trying to be clever. Lesson in life is just don't be clever. Don't, just don't, it doesn't work. It always goes wrong if you be clever. Now it's not zooming in, why aren't you zooming in? There we go. I serve a risen saviour. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say, I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. Well, that's lucky, isn't it? So let's have a go at this hymn. Shall we use a bit of mutation? That one. Some flutes for eight and four foot with a nice... Uh, 12th or Nazard on the great, accompanied by some little man, some little guys on the choir and on the swell. This should be, hopefully, what Daniel is going to expect. Okay, let's have a go. Um, yeah.
Andrew Luce quite rightly says pause on the top F at the end of the refrain. I don't know this music at all. It feels like a bit of a Methodist tune that. Is that right? Is it, where, do you, who knows that tune? Who knows it? Where is it popular? Is it popular, where, in Wales? Manchester? Liverpool? Burnley? Where is it popular? Texas? I don't know. Not popular. Not, it's not popular in Romsey. It's not, never done, never done in Winchester. Let me know. Let me know where it's popular. Where have I got to go to hear that? Next one up comes in from Richard Allegra, who has asked for, I don't know whether this is necessarily needs to him, but that's not a bad thing at all. It's a great tune though, so I'm very happy to play it. It's Come Ye Faithful, Erase the Strain. Ooh, it's right over the top. I think this is on my iPad, so I'll have a look. Come Ye Faithful, Erase the Strain. Well, uh, make sure we have the right tune. That's a good point. That's the wrong tune on my iPad. So let's, uh, let me go to my email. Uh, so the tune emailed James Words. Not the words. Okay, so that's the tune. Okay, interesting. Um, words on 106. I'm talking to myself because I'm just trying to work out how to um, present present this hymn to you in the best way. Uh, so he's going to 106 in the NEH. And for the words and the tune is on my screen. Well, it's 106 in the NAH, isn't it? Can we go? Yeah, there we go. Uh, to the tune, Gallia's Party, eh? Oh, it is it's the same tune, I think. Yeah, it is. Sorry, but that's a little hiatus there. We're just trying to work out. The tune uh, is actually. Um, Caused something else in the NEH, which has caused me a little bit of confusion, but it's the same tune, it's the same music, I think, anyway, uh, because on what James has sent me, it's the same tune but a different name. Richard Lego, if it's the wrong tune, just let me know and we'll see what we can do about it. So, come ye faithful, raise a strain of triumphant gladness. This is a loud one, isn't it? All these hymns are really uplifting. I love it, love it, love it, love it.
fabulous tune. I love that. That's well known to me, well known in this country. Thank you very much, Richard, for requesting it. Okay, so we're going to get into another hymn, which Low in the Grave Lay He. Hmm. Do I know that one? Do I know that one? Do you know? Do I know that one? I don't think I... Well, I always say that, and then it ends up that I do know it. Let me have a look in my... Where is it? The Complete Anglican. Oh, someone's just joined us in the room. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. Happy Easter, everybody. Complete Anglican. Happy Easter. To you. <laughs> have you had a good day? Yes, thank you. And how have you? I've had a very good day, thank you very much. I had some good Easter eggs, some good lamb, good company, good organ music. Did you have some good Easter eggs? Have you had some chocolate? I did. We should open one. Live on the air. Celebratory I, Easter egg. Did you know that the, that the, 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 the chocolate egg has been sort of the, the, the symbolism of the empty tomb? The hollow egg. Did you know that's been adopted? It's a bit far-fetched, isn't it? Well, it's got, I, I heard that today on some, know whether something the, I read on the internet. I thought, oh, I didn't know that one. I knew that eggs... Was were... the tomb made of chocolate? Well, probably not. But it, anyway, it, I think Christians will try and I claim like... this bit of symbolism. It's interesting. It's not a, An excuse to eat chocolate. The hollow egg is the empty tomb. I like, the, I like an, any excuse to eat chocolate, but I think it, <laughs> it makes more sense that it's the beginning of new life, isn't it? It's an egg. But it's... that's what exactly... Easter but bunny. there's just a double reason now to eat hollow eggs so made I, of chocolate. Uh, wouldn't it be funny if they were full, not hollow? Anyway, so let's go into our next, this is our tenth, at least, we have more than that actually. Low in the grave lay he, which is coming from Marty he M. Lay he, he lay. <laughs> um, Marty M, sponsored for five dollars. Thank you very much, Marty. Um, and, okay, nothing else to say about it. Let's have a go. Oh, Andrew says, if in B flat, Hold final top E flat at end of refrain. It is in B flat. Uh, okay, I will do just that. <laughs> Let's have a I go. I like PGM music's pun there, Toomlerone. Oh, okay. Toblerone, Toomlerone. Yeah, I like it. I like it. We should think of some good. more. Yeah, good puns. Who can come up with the best Chocolate pun? Chocolate puns, keep them coming. <laughs> Let's have a go. Um, where are we going to go? Let's go on to this one.
Well, I have never done that one before live, as it were, in the real world, but I have played that on VC before. Um, I've never heard it being performed or sung in a church. I can imagine it being very good. I can imagine it starting quite quietly, quite mysteriously, actually, and then the refrain starts quite low on that low B flat, and then it gets higher and higher and higher. And I, I can just imagine a big crescendo as we go through the refrain. Is that how it's normally done? So words and music there by Robert uh, Lowry, or Lowry, Lowry, I think, uh, 19th century. Cool, thank you very much. Uh, who requested that one? That was a Marty M, thank you very much. Um, and Andrew said they had this hymn this morning. Well, there we go. Pretty much like that, he said. That's lucky. Do you know, I'm running out of space on this organ bench because there are hymn books literally everywhere. I've got hymn books over here, BIS organ books over there. 300 people in front of me. I can't move, I'm surrounded. Um, that's, oh, another great Easter. You know what, coming your way, number 121 in the NEH, it is this joyful Easter tide. We had this this morning in Romsey, actually. I don't really think this is a, I think this works better as a, as a solo choir piece, actually. It's quite hard for the congregation to sing it because it needs to be quite fast, quite uplifting. The congregation can't always keep up. I mean, to give them their credit, they did. To be fair to them, they did keep up, but I would say that this is more of a choir piece. Do you agree that this is a choir piece more than a congregational piece? Let me know. Thank you very much, however, to Jay Kurtz for sending $20 through. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, and has asked for this joyful Easter tide. Words. Um, actually, no, sorry. The music is not by Charles Wood, as I actually thought it was. It's been harmonised by Charles Wood. Actually, a melody is from David's psalm, um, based uh, from Amsterdam in 1685. That's quite a significant year. Um, but harmonised by Charles Wood. I always thought the tune was by Charles Wood, but no, I'm wrong. Anyway, waffle. Let's go.
<laughs> That's the thing, Doug, exactly right. This temper would likely lose many congregations. Yeah, well, exactly. But I think that, that that's, it needs to go at that speed. This is what I mean. I think it's a choir piece. It needs to be that speed. I, I, I can't hear it. It's not joyful. It's, it's, a very, it's a very different piece to me that if you listen to choirs singing it, that is how they sing it. It's like a magical, almost. Anyway, let's have a go. I think Doug agrees. That, that's good. Making good progress. It, it loses a bit of its Easter dance-like quality at that slower tempo. I think so. Yeah, it works. I mean, it's not a choir can sing it easily at that faster speed. It's not, it, you know, it's just it's quite repetitive. It keeps coming back. You can it? sing it with a hornet buzzing around your cassock, can't you? I could give it a go. But uh, not, haven't not you given again. it a go in the past? I'm not doing that again. No. Have you told this them and this story? No, I have not. A few years ago, in the Easter vigil on Easter Saturday, Richard was directing a small group of his church choir in that piece, I think, and a few others. And um, there was a hornet's nest in the church. And one of the bases was very concerned because he noticed a large hornet buzzing around Richard while he was conducting that piece. And then the hornet appeared to disappear down Richard's cassock between sort of this bit, his collar. And, and, and I think the bass had to stop singing. He was so concerned for poor Richard's welfare. And you were trying to swat it away, weren't you, and beat with the other hand? I, well, I think I managed to do that. Anyway, well no humans or hornets were harmed during the service. Yeah, exactly. That's the important thing. No animals were harmed, including me. This is what happens. You have to keep, have to keep conducting. It was, Doug, it was, it was bigger than that. It was bigger than that. <laughs> it, was down, it was down there. And, you know, the show must go on, you know. We can't. Even if you've got a wretched hornet down the back of your bet, you know, neck bigger than a wasp, the show must go on, you know? Who's going to conduct the choir? And I was playing the organ, playing the organ with one hand, conducting with the other. That's a true story. And, and singing. That, that's you were what singing I used to tenor, do. and that's not I even sang, your voice part. Yeah. I sang, played the organ with one hand, See, and conducted Chris, with the other Chris hand. Chris H is in the and chat. Sing. She's, she's corroborating you your Chris, story. Chris will absolutely. Uh, say that, did, we're not making this up, it happened. <laughs> this is what we used to do in my old church. It was, it was, it was like, that's what it was like. And this isn't how to wear a bra. Well, it was a Friday night. No, it was a Saturday. It was a, it was a Saturday. So. It was Easter Saturday, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't a Friday. <laughs> anyway, let's go on to um, a, a request which has come in uh, from, from Heiki or Heki who sent in this hymn here called, I lift my gaze to Golgotha, um, and hear my saviour call, the children's debts have all been paid, and all has been fulfilled. What's the tune here called? Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a Finnish folk melody, apparently. Um, and, and yes, I don't know what to say about it, really. Verse 2, the children's minds are filled with joy as victory trumpets sound. Let's re-engage that tuba. Um, when Jesus sets the captives free, whose soul by sin were bound. Is that a refrain or anything? There's a, re a funny repeat, Mark. Why is there a repeat there? I can gaze my eyes to go. Mm -hmm. The children's death. What does that repeat do then? I think you have to repeat the second, the last two lines. Okay, I think that's probably right. I'll give you a few verses of this. I can't believe it's Easter Day. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Would you like some chocolate? I'd love to. Love some. Yeah, I thought you'd never ask.
as Michelle says, it's in the minor key and it gets me every time. I agree, that's a rather um, mournful and powerful key, isn't it? B minor is a very solemn key. So there's a reason why this piece is in B minor, for example. It's stunning, and it is a passacaglia. It's in that B minor, it's such a dark key, which is why when when you do the St John Passion, those people who were involved with the St John Passion, um, the, the St John and the St Matthew actually end in a chorus, which is in well, actually the John ends with a chorale, but the chorus preceding the chorale is in C minor. And then the um, the uh, Matthew ends. But actually, when you do them the at baroque pitch, which is arguable, really, what that actually is, down the semitone in B minor, it just makes it a bit more gritty and a bit darker. I don't find C minor a particularly dark key, but B minor is. Okay, right, let's, let's keep on going before we start talking about synesthesia and colours and stuff like that. Awake my heart with gladness, which is a request from Scott. Let's go turn to the ELW, which is on my left-hand side, uh, number 378. Uh, here it is. Awake my heart with gladness. See what today is done. Now, after gloom and sadness comes forth the glorious sun. We're uh, floating at about 300 people in the, in the audience tonight. Could we have a plus one and your location, please? I'll start the ball rolling like this. That'll do. So something like that would be fabulous. Let's see where on earth you all are in the world. Uh, tonight. And, and I'll play this hymn for Scott.
as Pastor Blake Scarlett has just said, is, is indeed a wonderful Lutheran chorale um, with words by Paul Gerhardt. Uh, music is by Johann Kruger and it's called Auf Auf uh, Mein Herz, the tune according to the ELW. A wonderful tune, I didn't know that one, so thank you very much Scott for sending that one through and yes, we will get your book sent through ASAP. Um, so you can buy the book. I just did, I did see G. Fraser ask where you can buy it from. You can basically buy it from the Beauty and Sound online shop, which Bill Rady has uh, very kindly uh, posted a link to in the chat. Let's see if that link works. Yeah, it does take you directly to it. So it's 25 quid or whatever that is in your own currency. And then actually very, I think, a reasonably, pre reasonably priced um, um, delivery. Like 13, 13 or 12 pounds to America um, for one book. So that's pretty cool. And they're selling like hotcakes. Yes, yeah, so if, really if we were with. a big publishing company, we would have a distributor for the Ameri for, for, for America, but it's just not, we've looked at the numbers and it just doesn't work, unfortunately, because we're a small business. We have to just do it ourselves. And we've looked at several um, courier options. We did this with our previous book as well, which was slightly thicker and slightly heavier than this one. And I, I'm afraid the Royal Mail, British Royal Mail, was the cheapest for us as a small business. So that's where we're, the way we're going. Yeah, um, it's well, nothing we can do about that, I'm afraid. Post and delivery costs are what they are, you know. But we've been pleased, actually, with Call for Composers. They, they all arrived. We didn't have anybody. There was one that arrived damaged, but we never didn't have any that didn't arrive. So that was good. Uh, could you pass me the um, Council Choirs? No. That was a strange request. I know. Well, not it's not, it's not a carol. It's a, it, it's. Um, oh, Jesus Christ, the apple tree. Yeah, I, I think it's that. in here. Yeah. Jesus. What is in the book, Edward? Well, the what? winning entry nah, from the. The question is, what isn't in the book? <laughs> what is in the book? Well, here it is. Here it is. What's in it? There are. Nineteen pieces. Nineteen pieces. Uh, this Shining Night by Christopher Churchill, which Richard played the other day. Yes, that's online. Um, David Hall, Scherzetto. Maurice Fahrenberg, Cantilene. We've got Festival to Carter's Fantasies, Prelude on New Britain, Homage, The Heart Will Wander, Toccata, Toccatella. That's the Ghislaine Rees trap piece. That's a Toccata for a, a slightly um, easier... It's about grade seven, isn't it? Is that right? She wrote a Toccata for a slightly easier level. Because um, so many of the great organ Toccatas are just very difficult. Um, meditation on Ivan Maristella and of course Veni Creata by Tim Revald, the winner. Yeah, that was the winner. So, oh, yes, yeah, so the, the first place, oh. um, Tim Revald's Veni Creato, is based on the very famous, um, you know, the, the tune which we have at Pentecost, Come Holy Ghost Our Souls Inspire. Let me just find it. Um, you know, it's based on this. And so on, which you, you obviously all know how that goes. Then there's one which um, is based on. Which is fabulous. This is this, That's probably about grade five or six standard, actually, this one. It sort of has this in the right hand over and over again. And then the right, left, left, left hand. Very effective. Um, and then the third, the piece which came third place in the competition, um, the 2023 BIS composition competition, should I say, uh, was a piece by, where is he? It's all the way at the front. Um, Christopher Church's piece. And Moritz uh, Farnberg can, can, called Cantilen, which is basically a beautiful piece which could have been written by Vienne or Fidor uh, in the French style. A beautiful tune crescendo towards the end before it dies uh, back down very fabulous and then as Caroline said there's a toccatella a, 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 is that how it is yeah in here which is like a, a little a toccata but watered down um, which t Tom Bell played if you want to check out the pieces on here I'm going to gradually play the pieces that Tom Bell didn't play um, but just have a look for Tom Bell on Beauty and Sound and he plays uh, quite a few of those pieces in there. 
and you play them live in the in our summer festival. So we 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 sold a couple and I and um, they're very good these people because I said I'd like to get to eighty five sales and we did so we sold three copies so we've sold eighty five copies so far. We need to have a chat with the postman on Tuesday. I know so I told them all about that. <laughs> Actually, someone sent you a tip for the postman. A tip. Ah, oh, Sexton, look. $20 for the postman. <laughs> we should look. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea, actually. We should. I, we should. I did give him a tip at Christmas. Quite a, quite a decent we did. Tip well, he, he, yeah. he looks after us. So. For obvious reasons, he has a fair few things. CDs let's, mainly. Let's play this, um, this uh, carol. It's, it, it could be for Eater's Hide. It's The Tree of Life, which is obviously you know, all about that sort of the, the, the life. Um, but the tree of life my soul have seen laden with fruit and always green. Uh, the tree of life my soul have seen laden with fruit and uh, repeats. Uh, the trees of nature fruitless be compared with Christ the apple tree. I've never played this before on the organ, so that's, this is going to be interesting, isn't it? I'm not sure how we're going to do that, to be honest. Let's see what comes out. All right. So who's this for then? This is for Paul Anthony who sent through 20 pounds thank you very much paul and he wanted jesus christ the apple tree and i assume it's the one by elizabeth poston if not then i apologize
There we go, a rather interesting choice for Easter, but it's all about the tree of life, isn't it? That was the Elizabeth Poston arrangement of Jesus Christ, the apple tree. There's a title, but the words that rain there. The words are actually the tree of life my soul hath seen. The bike isn't out, is it? Hugo's bike isn't out. I brought it in, I think. Okay, that's fine. Um, excellent. Okay, we're making really good progress. We've only got a couple more to go. So we've got um, Bill Ratey's mash up. How do I find this then? I think it was in Dropbox, but how do I get this on my iPad? Uh, is it on email as well? I, how do I? Uh, as I have loved Easter mashup, I know that my Redeemer liveth Edwards. Oh, oh, I got it. Okay, so I know that my Redeemer lives. What's comfort this sweet sentence gives? He lives. He lives who once was dead. He lives my ever living head. Now, let's have a look. So Bill says, first tune in G major, okay. Second in D major, that's fine, because it's just the dominant. Um, so how do we do this? Do we just go from verse one? Okay, so we alternate, we'll alternate the, um, the verses, if that's okay. Just get my get my stuff set up. So I'll have a couple of verses of each here. Bill Ratty likes to combine him. Ooh, where'd you come from? <laughs> Com combine hymn tunes, uh, which he thinks go together well. Bobby, this is outrageous behaviour. Sit on there. Sit there. Sit there. You can sit there. Okay. Nope. Stay there. Oh, don't stay there. That's fine. Whatever. Have it your own way. So it's uh, the second to him. Oh, it's two tunes basically, same words. Let's have a listen. Let's have a listen.
Uh, the, the second tune is really well known, um, particularly over here. It's called Duke Street, uh, as Eleanor Hart has already pointed out. This first tune, though, um, is I'm not sure what it's called, but it was by Louis D. Edwards. I'm not sure what the tune there is called, but the words were, I know that my Redeemer lives, what comfort this sentence, this sweet sentence gives, uh, by Samuel Medley. Thank you very much, Bill, for putting those two together. All right, so we're going to have now, oh, we have another one which is coming from Brendan Nolan, which I think um, James is trying to find it. But if not, actually, Brent, I think Brendan and uh, James, let's park it for next week. Because we're going to go into the poll now. So what I asked you to do a while ago was to nominate your favourite Easter hymn. All right. And you did. And James, the producer in chief tonight, collated all of your um, nominations and has compiled a top four Easter hymns, because the poll basically only allows me to do four. That's why, we, that's why it's not such a random number. So, as I play the um, next piece, you guys are going to vote for the best Easter hymn, as voted for by the BIS community. So here's the poll. Let me, just, let me quickly put it on. So that's one, two. Why are you waiting this for this? Could you just click the like button on this video, please? Highly free, and it just really helps the video, <coughs> and it really helps me. That rhymes. <laughs> it just it just makes the video, I guess. Um, YouTube will show the video to more people if more people click like. It's true. So at 190 likes, I can see on the screen now. So if you click the like, let's get. And we've, we've been around 200, 300 people watching. So just click that like button. So here's the poll. What is? Let's have a look. Best Easter hymn? Question mark. So I'm going to play something now for. Uh, Sean, where is it? Where's it gone? It's for Sean, isn't it? Sean Pear or Sean Pear. Uh, now, Sean, you're going to have to explain why you requested this for Easter. I think my brain is too tired to uh, draw a correlation between this piece or these words and Easter, but perhaps there's a very good um, reason for it. Where is it? Oh, here it is. It's Varkit auf ruft uns die Stimme. Um, how am I going to play with some of this organ? Okay, yeah, so I use the cornet down on the choir. That there, that there. So Sean, if you would give us give your reasoning for requesting this, that would be fab. And whilst I'm playing this, you vote for your favourite Easter hymn, and then we'll have the Easter hymn, and we'll have a big voluntary, and then we'll all go and eat an Easter egg. All right, so over to you, Sean, and over to you, chat. <laughs>
There we go, the beautiful Wacket uh, auf Rupt und die Stimme, which, as Sean says, I like to play it and liked it more when Caroline sang with it. Well, there is a recording of uh, Caroline and myself performing this, Caroline and Bobby. singing it. No? Bobby. Bobby. Bobby was there. Is she? Oh. Yeah, so I, I arranged it for solo voice and organ and, you know, a new arrangement. Which, by the way, if you want to buy that, that is available on the BIS website as well. <laughs> yeah, famously, Bobby jumped on my lap and I said, oh, hi, Bobby, that would be good. You can sit here for the video. And you said, no, this isn't, that, this isn't a Bobby video, you said. I said, oh, I think it is. And half the comments were saying how nice it was to see Bobby. Right. I remember that. <laughs> okay, so we, we, I think we have a winner from our poll. We've had 116 votes, and it looks like it's quite a clear winner. That's interesting, isn't no, it? Not my favourite. Well, what did, did you vote? I did. Oh, well. I'm in the minority. We're well, not the minority, mm. but not the winner. Mm. Let's have a look then. We'd better have it. We haven't had it yet today. Oh, well, you better have it. We'd better have it, and we'd better have a bit of raw sword, I think. Let's see what, if he's done anything to it. Let's spice it up a little bit. <laughs> spice up your life. <laughs> what was the best chocolate pun, by the way? I don't think I heard any, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. well, we Easter. It's called Easter Him. Um, Richard, there was a request that came in quite recently. This is the Feast of Victory. From Brendan Nolan. We went through this. We're going to have it next week. Ah, oh, lovely. Look, see your... Yes, really yeah, Daniel Kabaki, you, you got it. The Spice Girls reference in Virtual Church. He doesn't Everything miss a trick, that Daniel Kabaki, does here, he? So we're going to end the poll. <laughs> Jesus Christ is risen today. 35%. The first place. Second place. Fine with the glory. Oh, did you hear that? That's, that's an exciting sound. Second place. Thine be the glory. Jesus Christ has risen today with 26%. Oh, very close. It's the third, the third place. And the fourth place, this joyful Easter tide. There we go. We have Thank the you, results. Thomas Veronta, for ordering the book just now. There we go. That was so, what the ding was. I know. I was, I was just going to... About, actually, I, I, actually, after this, I'll, well, I'll give you all of the names who, of the good folk who've um, ordered ordered the, what you call it, the book during tonight's VC. So, the winner of the poll is Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Alleluia. Which is quite lucky because we haven't had this yet tonight. So, that was a good vote. Here we go. Let's have a bit of fun with this one. Final hymn, and then we'll go into our t uh, voluntary tonight.
by the um, random camera angle change, decided to go into the pedal there at the end, but hey ho, there we go. So you heard, saw me play bottom D with my left foot. That was of course the hallelujah chorus from the wonderful uh, Messiah by uh, our great composer, George Frederick Handel. Lots of clapping going on, and so a few goats. We Thank you very much, goats. everyone. Well, you, 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 and thank you. And some tuba emojis. Lots of tuba. The Salisbury, it's Salisbury, isn't it? You're still playing Yeah, Salisbury, we are yeah. in Salisbury today, of course. Salisbury, yep. a very appropriate organ for an Easter romp. A romp? Is that a what you call romp. it? Yes. We've had a romp, have we? Yes, we've Don't had know. a romp through Easter I think Easter it's been hymns. a bit more dignified than that. Wow. We've had some good Easter hymns. We've had great company. We've had some, wow. good, some great selections. So they've all been chosen by, by the chat. So thank you very much. I still think it's a romp. <laughs> very happy Easter to you all. Um, we will get these sent out. Oh look, the chocolate dish today. is empty. Uh, not today, obviously. That chocolate. was full of Easter egg a few minutes ago. What's that got to do with me announcing this? Well, I'm just, just noticing this empty. Have you finished in, announcing that that's empty? Yeah. Right. This is going to be sent out. Got, look, look at these copies. This one could be yours. This one could be yours. I could get Nala to put a no, muddy no, paw on. print on it. You've muddled them up. Yeah, that's mine. Can't send that one. Unless you've muddled them up. So that one couldn't be yours. That's Richard's. That's mine. It's got scribbles all over it. <laughs> like a test pen I've even written there. So I'll, I'll have that one if that's all right. But these will all be sent out um, this week, I think. <laughs> and if you want to give a personalised message, to send me an email to Richard or hello at Beauty in Sound. The idea is to wait for the other person to finish talking. I just had a great thought in, though. In life. Okay. Hugo could even attack it with his crayons, no, but I don't think you'd want that. Why would people? Come on. <laughs> Sensible suggestions only. So, <laughs> Hugo we've would love, sold... nothing, love nothing more than attacking one with his crayons. Have you, how much chocolate have you had? <laughs> we've ha sold 89 copies. And let me just give a shout out to the people who bought them during the live stream. If anyone buys one in the hey, next Bob. like 30 seconds, you'll hear the ping and go rather loudly, I think. So let's have a look. So who's, who's been very generous and who's bought them just now? Orders, here we go. So we've had orders just from Peter Sharp, Thomas Maranta, Gordon Frazier, uh, um, Burnt Chow, uh, Cheryl Hart, Donald Dodson, uh, and James Mossop. Those very kind folk have ordered their books during the live stream, so thank you very much for doing that. And as I say, we are now at 89 sales, which is just, um, it tickles me pink, which is a good thing. Hello, Alan. Happy Easter to you. Hello, everyone. Hello, Alan. Okay, right, let's go on to our next thing tonight, which is Easter eggs and something to drink as well, I think. So thank you all so much for join, uh, joining in tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the section of hymns. I hope you've had a great Easter. I hope you've had um, you know, a, a great Holy Week leading up to the, this weekend. And I hope that you have a good Easter Monday tomorrow. I hope the weather looks variable, I think, here. We've had a great weekend of weather, which in England is novel because we've had so much terrible weather. It's actually been quite nice, which is quite very nice to have the sun. A romp. Mitchell's agreeing with me on romp. A fun romp, he calls it, you see. And um, yes, I hope you all have a good, a good Monday. Peter Bray has said, Christ is risen. We should say he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Are we allowed to say that? I'm sure we are. Well, we're not in Lent anymore. No, that well. You can say what you like, not, as long as it's you're not, not rude. You're not a priest, are you? But yeah, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. People can say hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, do you mean the um? Well, yeah, I think so. Oh, look for Margaret. It's already Monday. Oh, it feels like Monday here, to be honest. It's that late. It's quarter past ten. But actually, we we lost an hour, didn't we? So um, it's actually quarter past eleven here. Easter waffle. Yeah, indeed. What's the waffle one? Let's go. Right. Good night, everyone. You take care and. You stay safe. Anything else to say? Is that it? Hallelujah. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>